In this video, we want to introduce you to one of the key features of American legal education. We call it the Socratic method, uh, and it is uh, based on the approach that the Greek philosopher Socrates used with his own students. And it's really, I think, one of the uh, most important aspects of American legal education, and I suspect is probably quite different from what you're familiar with in your own countries. So in the Socratic method, the professor is not going to lecture to you about the content of the law. Instead, the professor is going to use a special kind of dialogue or conversation to draw out from you key legal principles uh, and, to, and to analyze them with you. And what we're going to do in this short video is to show you how the Socratic method works. We're going to be discussing a case called Bailey versus West, which you're going to see again in your contracts course with uh, Professor Baker. Uh, it's a case, a 1969 case from the Supreme Court of Rhode Island. So let's get started. Now, typically, a professor using the Socratic dialogue does, again, does not uh, lecture at the students, but instead will just begin by posing a question. Now, this question might be asking you to recite the facts, but more typically, the professor is simply going to pose a question that just really gets you right into the meat of the material and really begins to get you talking about the legal issues. So let me give you an example. Caitlin. Can you tell me about uh, whether there was a contract between the plaintiff and the defendant in this case? What do you think? I would say there was not a contract in this case. Why not? Um, there wasn't any mutual agreement because the, the, defendant, or the plaintiff didn't know who he was dealing with. He didn't know if he was supposed to be billing the defendant or uh, the seller. Now, what difference does that make? What difference does his knowledge or lack of knowledge make? After all, isn't it, that the, isn't it the case that the plaintiff here took care of this man's horse? for four years. Why isn't that enough for there to be a contract? We, we don't want to force contracts on people. The defendant had no intention of giving the horse to the plaintiff. He had the bill of lading sent to Belmont Track. He didn't send it. What difference does intent make? Um, intent is one of the key elements. We want people to contract, uh, have freedom to contract, and we don't want to force contracts on people. Now, you'll notice that after Caitlin answered my first question, I followed up with a second question, and then a third question, and then a fourth question. This is typical of Socratic dialogue. The professor builds the dialogue in this way, layering one question on another question on another question. And the reason that we do this uh, is really to help the student to go deeper into the case and to sharpen your uh, legal reasoning and your analytical skills in this way. Let me turn to Earl. Earl, what do you think? Was there a contract in this case between the plaintiff and the defendant? I actually think that there was a contract. You do? So you disagree with Caitlin? Yes. Okay, tell me why. So even though uh, Bailey didn't know whose horse it was, he knew it belonged to one of two people, and he sent bills to both of those people. The fact is that Bailey actually did own the horse. So even though Bailey was unsure and sent bills to multiple people, he got the right person in the end. So it's unfair for him to have to foot the cost for this horse when his business, uh, he should be compensated for, for his business. But isn't it unfair for the defendant to have to pay if the defendant didn't know that, that he was taking care of the horse for him? So it might have been very easy for Wes to let Bailey know that he, that he didn't want this uh, horse boarded. And there was just a miscommunication in terms of the, the driver didn't relay that information. And it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be Bailey's fault. So you'll notice that Caitlin and Earl disagreed on whether there's a contract in this case. And in the American approach, that's perfectly fine. What's important is not getting the right answer, but instead being able to argue both sides of, of the case. In fact, in the American legal system, being a good attorney means that you should be able to make well-reasoned, uh, uh, articulate arguments on behalf of your client, whichever side of the line they fall on. Uh, so, for example, by our goal for you by the end of Professor uh, Baker's contracts course is that we will have sharpened your legal reasoning skills to the point where you can step in and represent either the plaintiff or the defendant. As an online student, you are going to be a part of this dialogue. Just like Caitlin and Earl, we really want to bring you into the discussion. So you, online student, will be participating in this dialogue. Uh, professors will be uh, posing questions to you and will be asking you to answer. Now, your answer might come in a variety of formats. We might ask you to record a short video. We might ask you to answer a series of short answer questions or a series of multiple choice 
questions. We might also simply pose a question and leave it unanswered. And we'll ask you to discuss that question with your fellow online students. So this is a preview of what you'll be experiencing in many of your courses. We look forward to hearing your responses and to bring you into this dialogue. Good luck.